I am Anil Kumar and in this video I will discuss how to find inverse of quadratic functions. We have three different types of quadratic functions here and this video will cover all the three cases. The first one is y equals to x squared. As you know inverse is the reverse operation. We need to swap x and y and then solve for y. So let's do the first one, y equals to x squared. So when you swap, what happens? So when you swap x and y, you get x equals to y squared. And next step will be solve. You need to solve for y, correct? So y will be, whenever you do square root, you have to do plus and minus. So plus minus square root of x is y. Now since y has two values, we know that inverse, in this case, which is plus minus square root of x, is not a function, right? Not a function. Correct. So what you can also do is you can kind of sketch it. So I'm doing it for the first one. You can do uh, the sketching of these functions on your own. Right? So y equals to x squared will be a parabola kind of like this and its inverse will be a square root function with positive and negative values kind of like this. So this point is 1, 1, right? So that is how uh, you get inverse of y equals to x squared. Now in the second case, we have kind of changed the equation a bit. So what we've done here is we made it x squared minus 2. So it kind of goes up by 2 units, but the method is same. So first step is let us swap at x and y. We get x equals to y squared minus 2. Solve for y. So we get x plus 2 equals to y square or we can say y is equals to plus minus square root of x plus 2. Now since there is plus and minus you know it is also not a function right since we have two values correct for any x value more than one so it is not a function. At times uh, you may be asked to restrict the function itself to ensure that the inverse is a function right. So that is, we'll take up that in another video. At present, we can say f inverse. I'm not writing x since it is not a function. Plus minus square root of x plus 2. So that is how you do this kind of equation. Now, in the last example, which is y equals to x square minus 2x plus 3, swapping is simple. You can swap x and y. Once you do that, what do you get? You get x equals to y square minus 2y plus 3. Now in such a case it is very difficult to isolate y and get the answer. How do we do it? Well completing the squares is the right way. So let's do completing the squares. So if you remember what we do is we do we take half of this coefficient of y in this case which is 1 add and subtract its square right. I am purposely writing 1 square minus 1 square. I could have written plus minus 1 also. Uh, to give you an idea that it is normally half of 2, right? So this is this is one part which you do separately, right? And then you keep this plus 3 away. Now in this particular case, first three terms form a complete square. And so we could write them as y minus, since this is minus, 1 whole square. And here we have minus 1. Open the bracket to get plus 3. This could be solved as y minus 1 whole square. Minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2. And we get x. Now you get an equation where you can solve for y. So let's take out, take away 2 from both the sides. We get x minus 2 equals to y minus 1 whole square. And let's do square root. So we get plus minus square root of x minus 2 equals to y minus 1 or y will be equals to taking 1 on this side 1 plus minus square root of x minus 2 right so that is how we could write inverse and now in function notation f inverse is 1 plus minus square root of x minus 2 you get an idea right so that is how you could find inverse of any quadratic function so these are general quadratic functions starting with the parent one that one is transformed function, two units up, down, two units down. And here we have a general standard form. So whenever you are given quadratic equation in, as a trinomial, that's given here, 
Completing the squares is the method which helps you to isolate and find the solution. In, in all these cases, what you observe here is that inverse of a quadratic function is not a function, right? So let me write it down very clearly here that inverse of quadratic function is not a function, right? This is when there are no restrictions. However, what we can do is we can do some restrictions, right? To ensure that the inverse is a function, right? We could do that. So that will be an exercise for you. How will you restrict these so that their functions and their inverse, inverse of these functions is also a function, right? That is what is an exercise for you, which you can do. And the key is to restrict domain to either side from the vertex, right? That's the key. And I think um, that should be okay for this video. We'll take up another video to deal with this topic in greater details. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.